Hi guys, so today I wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, I wanted to go over with you guys, it's my blurry, um, my elementary school journal. This is actually something I used from what I believe it was 10 until 14, so four years into this thing. And I put number one because this was my first one. Oh my gosh, it's, oh, it's tearing up so bad. I think I'm gonna take it out of here. It's one thing to store, but it's definitely too old to have in these strings using. Okay, sorry. Okay, so here is the cover. It's this little kitten. I thought it was cute. So, I don't know what this input error code thing is. Um, and then my maiden name was Sidwell, so whatever, try to find anything you can on me. <laughs> um, so it's 10 to 14, 2003 to 2007, September 9th to June 23rd. And this was my first one. That was how I used to do bubble letters. I was so talented. Uh, <laughs> and so the first entry, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, just little bits and pieces. So, Dear Diary, today I got you at a book fair, and well, I have to go. I will write more later, I promise. Write W-R-I-G-H-T. <laughs> and this is my very first, I was such a dramatic child, so I'm just going to tell you ahead of time. Dear Diary, I don't care what Laura says. She's a brat. I thought we were friends, but she is so cautious of her money. She bought me a journal drawer, not this one. I remember this one. And I put in a dollar. It was $3.99. She says I can't have her till I pay her back. She says I owe her $6. Let's add it up and see. Come on. Like, seriously? Like, I'm sorry. I remember this girl. Like, she she was a liar. She had some issues. Like, there's some of the stuff in this journal that I, I didn't read through it before I <laughs> brought it up to YouTube. But there's some stuff on here that makes me really, really sick to my stomach about this little girl. Um... Ooh, I don't even want to get into too much of it, but, like, parents, if you've got a 10-year-old, like, even this is, this was a while ago, seriously, still watch your kids, because I'm telling you, some of the stuff that I wrote in here, I shouldn't have known when I was 10 years old. Oh my gosh. Okay, so, let's find something else. Oh my gosh. I had the biggest crush on this guy named Bob Klein. Oh my god. And it's funny, I ran into him recently, and he was kind of a dick. Sorry, I use language like that on this page, so if you're not okay with it, or you have it on speaker, and you have your kids, you might not want to watch my channel. But he was kind of a dick, and I couldn't believe that I had liked him. You know, oh. Let's see. Oh my gosh, that is a bright pun. Can you see that? Let me see. I need to like turn this down or something. This is obnoxiously bright. <gasps> oh, that is obnoxious. Okay. How do I get back to those? Oh. Well, anyway. The most obnoxiously bright thing I've ever seen. How do I turn this down? Come on now. There we go. Okay. So that is the most obnoxiously bright color I've ever seen. Ah! Okay. So... Um... <laughs> it says, I can only picture me and Bob together. I can see him handling me the... One, two, three, one, two, three, ten billion dollar ring. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I had real high expectations for you, Bob. Uh, I literally use the terms in here. I believe there's a girl in Bob's class that has a crush on him and he's hot for her. I'm 10 years old and I'm using things like he's hot for her. <sighs> this is awful. This is so, so bad. I'm so excited. To 
tomorrow is my birthday. I'll be 11 so far. I've got Game Boy games, a yellow stuffed tabby cat, Hillary Duff CD Metamorphosis, my Amanda BFF spent the night. I have $20 from just my birthday already. And that says something like Boz's history. Okay, like this whole book is about him, so like let's not lie. Bob is history. He don't like me because that's grammatical. On my birthday wish, I wish Bob would love me. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Bob got me a birthday present. Oh my god. Oh my god. Today is my birthday. All of my friends got me something. Bob got me a little dog, which was precisely what I wanted. Does he like me of a friend or as well more than a friend? Oh my god. And then it literally says November 1st, 2003. You know, I should stop writing about Bob, but whatever. And yesterday was Halloween. Girl. Girl. That's so embarrassing. What am I doing in my life? <laughs> okay, what else? See, this was, okay. After I read The Luckiest Girl, I felt a bit sad. Then it came to me, Bob, even if we do get together, it won't last or I'll end up with someone else and we'll move on just like Shelly and Philip, the main characters in The Luckiest Girl. I mean, yeah, it, that's exactly what happened. And I, I'm, that's so sad. Like, I don't, I don't know how to describe it, but my life worked out. You know, and like I thought at this point in time that like literally the entire existence of my life would be if I was with Bob. <laughs> There's Amanda, she's my best friend. Um, we no longer are friends, we don't talk. I hear she's married with a baby now. And that's great because, I mean, we're close to 30, so that's what most 30-year-olds apparently are doing, except for me. Um, but she and I grew apart. She was dating this guy, Michael, and they broke up. Michael and I became really, really good friends, and we were just always friends. And he had nowhere else to go, and I asked her if it would be okay if he came and stayed with me while he gets back up on our feet. She said everything was fine, and then freaked out, and got really mad because apparently she didn't want him there but anyway he's doing really great right now he's seeing this new um another girl that she's very very sweet and he actually I got him into my company and we're really close and I'm like I'm really glad that I actually got like one of my best friends out of all this but there's so much drama that happened between me and her so I don't know it's it's bad like this right here if you guys saw this other page it says these people are obsessed with sex. I'm 10 or 11 years old. I mean, he's always doing all this stuff in class. He needs to grow up and stop acting immature. <laughs> it, she, like Amanda said, it's really true. One thing, I have to write this down. One thing Amanda said that is really true. When you ask where, do, when you used to ask where do babies come from, it used to be when people really love each other. Now it's when people really want to have sex. I'm 11 years old. I, my whole childhood, I, that was me. I, <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, uh, it just makes me suck. My whole childhood was about boys. Well, still no boyfriend, Valentine's Day was a total waste of my time. Honey, honey, no. It's just been, it's so bad. And then listen to this, I was talking about this at work with some of my coworkers because I just could not believe. Oh, all right, well today has been pretty A-OK. -okay. I have to tell you about it. Good At night, staying up all night. 5 a.m., started to cry, realizing I got no sleep. 5.05, .05, started to get ready for school. 6.02, watch TV and drink coffee. I'm 11. 7 o'clock, left. 7.27, got to school early, talked to Sarah. 7.45, missed locker clean out. 8 o'clock, went to library, got book. 8.30, wrote poems. 9.30, got in trouble, lunch detention. 10 o'clock, last day of dare. 11 o'clock, lunch. 11 o'clock, Mr. met Mr. 
whoever at choir sat, we got a new teacher, I, I guess, and then I sat in the front. Uh, two o'clock, finished math before anyone. Five o'clock, return to Neverland. I don't know what the fuck that means. <laughs> But seriously, it, it started up like with me waking up and crying and drinking coffee at being 11 years old and then like getting in trouble and getting lunch detention. And but it was a, it was like a day for me. Oh my gosh. Oh, I just my life is so sad. I was so lonely. I, I there's so many like even this. This. I have been missing way too much school. I'm so depressed. I'm 11. <sighs> and it's just all about boys. Oh, here we go. I have been watching Veronica Mars. At first, I thought it was Mr. Kane did it, killed Lily. Then her dad, Mr. Kane. I, I, I thought that I, I, I'm confused. You mean Abel Koontz did it, right? I don't know, girl. Mr. Kane and Lily's dad are the same people. Then random people. Then Duncan's mom did it. But now I found out that Duncan sometimes loses control over himself. I love that show. I mean, I they just came out with a new remake of it, and I can't bring myself to watch the last of the episodes. I should do that today. Just, I, I know something bad happens to one of my favorite characters, and I just don't want to do it. Ugh. <sighs> okay. So this was a thing too. My friend Amanda, that girl back there, had accused me of stealing her CDs and I didn't, which was the craziest thing because I felt so, so bad that she would accuse me of that and I was just like dumbfounded. Like I didn't even like She Daisy and I had, uh, the whole thing is that she was upset because I ended up, my mom bought me the same Toby Keith CD that she had and hers went missing. So then all of a sudden I sold it. And it was just, I don't know. Like, I don't know why I was friends with her. It's just so bad. Here we go. I am so depressed, I feel like killing myself sometimes. This just makes me sick to my stomach. How was this not noticed by people around me? I mean, I feel like in today's modern day and age, like, <sighs> please talk to your kids. There's no, like, I remember going through this stuff. I remember, I want all the bullies on my bus to stop being mean to me. I'm so depressed, I feel like killing myself sometimes. Just talk to your kids. Talk to your, you know, nieces, nephews, something. It's too prevalent in today's day and age. I'm calling myself names. Fat, dumb, ugly. I really wish that I would have had, you know, maybe a friend that was a little bit more of somebody that filled my soul back then instead of beating me down. Because I I know that, like, Amanda, that was a big thing is I have so many pages up here of her accusing me of stealing stuff and telling me I wasn't a good friend. And I, it gets really, really bad. Like our friendship. So this is when I start getting into middle school and getting crushes on different boys and then um, we ended up doing this with our AIM conversation through AIM. Oh man. It just gets so bad. Um, we started going out to chat rooms, me and Amanda, and we ended up meeting some boys on chat rooms and talking about dating them and all kinds of stuff. It, it just got so fucking bad. Like, there was so much jealousy and issues. We were going after the same guys that probably were, like, 40-year-old guys sitting in their basement that we were arguing about. And, like, stuff like this. Like, she wrote me. She says, you know what? I think shut your mouth. This is Amanda. And I don't like people talking about my best friend. I don't care if this is a threat. If you ever talk about Chelsea that way again, I will slit your throat. Oh, and Jenna, since I know you're watching her type this, I hate you. You know what? You know what? Eat shit and die. That's so, God, this is my best friend. I looked up to her. If I could do it all over again, I think I would try to have some healthier friendships. <laughs> Just, it's so dangerous. 
I look back and as an adult and it's just so, so disgusting to me. Okay, so let's get into a happier note. This is Jenna's perfect list of guys. So, uh, number one, looks good, must be appropriate. He must be able to make me laugh. So I'm gonna do this for Jeremy because that's who my fiance is and you know what, why not? Let's get into this like little high school vibe. All right, looks good. Looks good, must be appropriate. I think he's pretty hot, otherwise I don't know if I would have been attracted to him in the first place. He get a little hairy and fluffy, but I like him. Um, he must be able to make me laugh. Yeah, if, if you know Jeremy, he is, he's a nutball. <laughs> he's like the funniest guy ever. Oh, he's so cute. Um, we have to have serious conversations. This is something that we're still trying to work on. Jeremy does not deal well with serious conversations. He tends to get really quiet and clam up. Um, so this is something that we're trying to work on. Must have a life outside of me, but we'll drop whatever he's doing. Yes, Jeremy does. He's in a band. He is a manager of a word working place. He's doing very well for him in his own personal life, especially considering that I require a lot of attention. <laughs> He has to be smart, but not smarter than me. Okay, as an adult now, we are very different people. <laughs> so he knows all kinds of things that I have no idea. We we excel in different areas. We balance each other out very well. He is a very, very smart guy, but he is definitely smarter than me in a lot of areas, as well as I'm smarter than him in different areas, but we balance each other out. He loves to read. Well, he likes to read comic books. <laughs> um, he loves country music and rap. Um, I don't know why. I, I don't like rap. I don't like rap. And I don't even listen to country anymore. Neither does he. And he is a musician. He's got his own things going on. He calls at 2 o'clock in the morning just to say he loves me. Well, we live together. And I work full-time. More than a full-time job. So... If he woke me up in the middle of 2 o'clock in the morning to say he loves me, he's probably going to get a pillow in the face. My parents like him. Well, my dad passed away a couple years before he was able to meet him, but my mom likes him okay. He can be a stubborn. Oh, yes, he can be. He has to have a reputation that even a little badass, even though he's really sweet. Reputation doesn't even matter that much to me. I... <laughs> I mean, he's a boss, he's a manager, so I guess he's like got that reputation. And he is a sweetheart. Amanda has to say he's okay, but they can't be more than acquaintances, not even friends. That's how bad it was. That's where my jealousy started because she would go after the guys that I was dating. I'm glad she's not in my life anymore. But to cross that out, Michael, who replaced her as my friend, um, those are, those, that was the one that dated her. Michael likes him, and Michael's never liked anyone that I've been with, so that's really sweet. Um, he has to hate Cody. Well, Jeremy doesn't really like him that much, so we got something. And then I crossed off something. I don't know what that says. He has to hold my hand in public. Yes, he does. He has to kiss me. And yes, he does. He has to be romantic. I mean... Yes, goth is still hot. Well, he's not goth. He is a respectable, like, you know, 30-year-old man now that has a career and doesn't wear eyeliner, so that was just my type in middle school. He can be conceited. No, Jeremy can't be. He puts me ahead of just about everything. Why would I want somebody like that? <laughs> I'm the one he calls when things go wrong. Absolutely. He sings to me on the phone, um, and in person, and on stage, and everything else. If there's a break in the conversation, he says, I love you. Yes, he does that. I inspire him to do something great. Um, he tells me all the time that I got his life together, which is, yeah. Um, he loves lightning and thunder. I mean, he doesn't love it, but it's whatever. He'd take me dancing in the rain. Yes, if I really wanted to, he would. <laughs> he loves roller coasters. You know what? We've never gone to an amusement park together. <laughs> People are afraid of him. I mean, he's a boss, so I guess there's that, but Jeremy's not really somebody to be afraid of. He's, he's warm and loving. He prefers to lead and not be a boss. He would rather have a discussion with somebody and help them get better than tear them down. He, he's, he's a light in the darkness. 
he's protective over me, but not too productive. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he he doesn't he doesn't really get too protective. I mean, it's it's kind of hard to say like explain, but he is pretty much like people should be more afraid of you than I would be of you know them. He knows I know how to handle myself, and yeah, we hardly ever fight. That is not true. We fight all the time. <laughs> But when we do, he fights, yeah, fair. Yes, he does fight fair. I'm the one that doesn't. <laughs> Never calls me hot or sexy. He has to be beautiful and refers to me as honey or baby. Yes, that he does. When we talk on the phone, he has to talk a lot and it must be about things that I'm interested in. Hoi vey, girl. Okay, so Jeremy does not talk very much at all. And I feel very strongly that when he talks to me about something he's interested in, I should, I obviously want to listen to him. I want to hear what makes him happy. So that's, that's childish. He has to know how to be a good boyfriend and doesn't force me to do stuff I don't want to do. Oh girl, yes, 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 yes. And then Amanda and I aren't friends anymore. We let a guy come between us. I hate Amanda. She, I refuse to talk to her. Oh, it just gets so bad. It's so TJ, my first actual boyfriend that I broke up with and Amanda started dating right away. And then I definitely did some things that I'm not proud of. And TJ and I got back together only for me to dump him a little bit better, a little bit later. I mentioned TJ rules. <laughs> oh my goodness. So this was funny. So I ended up after TJ, I dated um, a couple, uh, let's see, I dated one Chris that ended up not working out very well. So I broke up with him and I started dating his best friend, which happened to be this guy that I was talking about way back then. Like he, we became really, really good friends and I don't know, I really liked him, but so reasons we show, we get along great, people think we look good together, he's a good guy, he's generous, he always buys me monsters and whatever I ask him to, God. Ooh, I just pulled a page out. He fits a lot of my descriptions of the perfect guy, he always compliments me, my parents love him, reasons why not to, he's my best friend, I can't really see us dating. I would be scared, it'd be awkward, and badly. I don't really want a rebound guy. He's never had a girlfriend before. Well, he ended up dating this other girl, and that's when I felt like madly in love with him, and was dating his best friend, and broke up with his best friend, and oh God. I ended up dating him for two years, and we still talk. So, <laughs> uh, he, was, he was my first, first everything. Love him. But that ended up really, really bad. So, we're just friends. Okay, let's talk about my last diary entry. Oh gosh. Alright, well, uh, it's well, since I only have three pages left in this diary, I probably should sum up the last four years I've gone through crushes. 14 to be exact. And I've gone through hard times. I've made a lot of memories and wrote down my deepest feelings, thoughts, dreams, and everything in between. On May 3rd, 2004, I wrote about how I wanted to kill myself. Well, thank God I didn't. If I had, I never would have gotten to where I am now. I'm almost 15 and a sophomore. I have so many friends despite how depressed I got sometimes. I know that no matter what, I can make it through. And I'm more than eager to discover the many more memories I will make in my life. Maybe things will turn out the way I want. Maybe not. I guess I'll never know. Well, I mean, I will when I, it's at the end of my life. <laughs> the last four years have been most eventful years of my life so far. I just urge my older self who will be reading this not to forget or judge the memories that meant so much at the time. Peace out, babe. Okay. So it makes me feel really bad at the end. I'm like, please don't judge me for this stuff. When I'm literally judging myself the entire time and was like, oh babe, no, oh my God, no, no, no. I mean, it 
did. It mattered so much to me at the time when I wrote this stuff down. I So many tears, so much anger, so much just amazing things went into this and I'm not going to judge myself for it. I was little. I had some room to grow and I've changed a lot since then. But that was my first journal, guys. So please respond as positively as you can. Remember, this is like me going to your house, taking your journal and reading your journal out loud for everybody to hear. This is really personal stuff and whether I relate or don't relate to anything that I wrote in this journal anymore, it's, unre it's irrelevant. This whole point of this was to show people that, you know, we all start from somewhere. We all have journal entries that we don't want people to read and it's totally normal. We don't have... Like, oh, let me see my some of my new journals. Okay, so this was 2019. This is a Moleskine that didn't kill my soul as much as the other ones. Like, not everything can be beautiful. Like, this is one, me and my friend, my best friend got our nails done. And we had a campfire with my friend Michael that I was just talking about. Like, the house that I wanted to buy. Not everything can be rainbows and sunshine and beautiful. I mean, if you read the words of some of this in here, it's some of this is really ugly too. Let's see what's this. Oh, this is when we went just this last year for, you know, my best friend Michael, his birthday. We went to a haunted house, which is like so crazy because I that's him right there. So there's him, me, Anna. Oops, I hear totally out of frame. Okay. Him, me. Anna, Brittany, Brittany's fiance Joe, and my fiance Jeremy. So that's when we all went to his birthday stuff. But like not everything, and like there's us again with a chainsaw dude. Not everything can be beautiful and perfect. Some of it's really, really ugly, but the point thing is to do is, you know, just remember to write. Like this is just in fall. And it's still, this stuff means the world to me. So, yeah. Anyway, post anything that you want below. Keep it positive. If you have any questions, if you want me to keep going through some of my old journals, let me know. Um, otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching and have a really good week.